So in this problem, we have a car of mass 900 kilos travels along a straight horizontal road with constant resistance to motion of magnitude Q newtons. The car passes through point A on the road with speed 6 meters per second and 8 seconds later passes through a point B on the same road. The power developed by the car while travelling from A to B is zero. Furthermore, while travelling from A to B, the car's direction of motion is unchanged. Determine the range of possible values of Q. OK, so... Um, for part A, then, uh, I'm going to show you two possible ways of considering it. So... The first thing we're going to do is draw ourselves a diagram. So for part A, here's my road, here's my car. It has a weight of 900 G. There's a normal reaction force. There's going to be a driving force and the constant resistance force uh, magnitude of Q Newtons. Now, um, this bit here that says that the power developed by the car while traveling from A to B is zero, because the power is zero, this implies that the driving force must be zero. So that's gone. Okay, so that's the first thing we can identify. Now, from there, it's traveling through A. Okay, so it passes through A at six meters per second. And eight seconds later, it passes through B. Now, there are two possible options that we need to consider. So, option number one. Option number one is that the car continues at a constant speed. So, it starts at six metres per second. And eight seconds later, it is travelling through B at six metres per second. So option one is constant speed of six meters per second. So it passes through B at six meters per second. Now, if that's the case, that would imply that the acceleration is zero. Okay, so if the acceleration is zero, then we can look at resolving our forces to the right. So taking to the right as positive, we would have minus Q is equal to the mass times by the acceleration. So Q would be equal to zero. So the magnitude of the resistance forces would have to be zero in order for the car to maintain that constant speed of six meters per second. So that's the lowest that Q can go. Now, the second option is that the car goes through A at 6 metres per second. And eight seconds later, it just passes through B, because it has to pass through point B, um, but just passes through it at 0 metres per second. So you might think that just after it gets to zero metres per second, but it has passed through B. So if that is the case, so passes B at zero metres per second. Now, um, I apologise for the wording there because it doesn't really make sense that you're passing through B at zero metres per second, but it's just going to be just after we pass B, uh, the car stops. So, if that is the case, then we can work out the acceleration. The acceleration will be the change in velocity. So, zero, take away uh, six metres per second, divided by the time, which is eight. So, that would be minus three quarters, so minus 0 0.75 metres per second per second. So that would have been metres per second per second there. OK, so if that's the case, we can look at resolving to the right. So we would have minus Q is equal to the mass times by the acceleration. So 900 times by 0 0.75 is 675. 
Now, it can't actually be equal to 675 because otherwise the car is going to come to a stop at B. It's not going to pass through B. So therefore, Q can be equal to zero, zero. So Q is greater than equal to zero, but it has to be less than 675. Now, there is an alternative way. Now, I, I did suggest this, that I was going to show you two methods of doing this. Um, there is an alternative method that you could consider here, and that is to look at using impulse and momentum, okay, because that's what we're, we're looking at in this section. That's why I put the video here. So, if you consider um, the impulse, so the impulse we know is force times time, and the only force being applied horizontally is minus Q. So taking to the right is positive, we would have minus Q. Times by time, and that's 8 seconds. That's going to be equal to the change in momentum. So if uh, the velocity is the same and we get constant speed, then you would have the mass times by the velocity, so 6, that's the final velocity, and this is the initial velocity. Okay? And of course that would be 0, and so Q would be 0. Now if you look at the uh, impulse of momentum for our option 2, we'd have minus Q times 8 is equal to well, you would first of all have uh, m times v, which is 900 times your final velocity of 0, take away 900 times 6. So here, you would have minus 8q is equal to uh, minus 5400, zero, zero, and minus 5400 zero, zero, divided by minus 8 is 675. Okay, so you can get your two values that way instead. So you can use uh, impulses equal to the change in momentum to find your values of Q as well. Okay, so that's an alternative way through. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Uh, the car later passes through point C on the road. While travelling between B and C, the power developed by the car is modelled as constant and equal to 18 kilowatts. The car passes through C with a speed of 5 metres per second and acceleration 3.5 metres per second per second. Determine the value of Q. So, here is my car. It has a weight of 900 G, a normal reaction force, a driving force, and Q, the magnitude of the resistance forces. Now, in this case, the power isn't zero, it's 18 kilowatts. So the power is equal to the driving force times the velocity. So 18,000 is equal to the driving force times by the velocity, which is 5. So the driving force would have to be 3,600 newtons. Now if that's the case, we can look at resolving horizontally. So we would have 3,600 take away Q is equal to the mass, which is 900, times by the acceleration, which is 3.5 metres per second per second. So 3,600 take away 900 times 3.5, and that gets us 450. So that's the value of Q we were looking for.